it's August 1st, 2021, uh, and we are finally in the final of the Gold Cup. USA and Mexico are the two teams that have arrived to this final, and in this video you are going to see a little bit of a rundown of both national teams, first the Mexico team and then the USA team. We are going to look at some of the strengths and weaknesses that both teams have so during this competition and we are going to look at the way both teams match up in this exciting final. Let's go first with Mexico national team. How does Mexico place? What is the game model looking like? What are some of the strengths and some of the weaknesses of this uh, L3 national team? So Mexico, uh, as we recall, have won uh, two games out of the three games in the, in the group stage. They tied against Trinidad and Tobago in that first game where they lost Chucky Lozano that was playing as a left winger. Then they beat Guatemala. They beat El Salvador to claim their first spot in the group stage. In quarterfinals, they easily beat Honduras, uh, which was decimated in terms of personal. And then they won in the very last second of a very long and exciting game versus Canada in what uh, was probably the most contested and difficult game for L3. How does L3, how does this team coach and lead by Tata Martino and the rest of his coaching staff play? So they usually line up in the picture, you are going to see a 1, 4, 3, 3 um, a formation. We are going to go into what they do offensively and defensively. And usually uh, the personnel that, that plays as well. So this is a team that has um, a combinatory style that looks to be very vertical and that looks to put the ball on the ground when they can or to go longer if it's needed and to switch the, the point of play a lot uh, to find the, the spaces. It is a team that, that in all these games, except for certain stretches versus El Salvador and versus Canada, have dominated the game uh, with the ball on the feet. And it's a team that definitely looks to play with the ball on the feet, looks to dictate the way the game is played and has been able to achieve that most of the time. So probably also in this game versus USA, it's going to have a little bit more of possession, but we're going to look into that a little bit later. When it comes to what, El Me uh, what Mexico does with the ball. So we were saying that they look on the picture as a 1-4-3-3, but then they are looking into certain structures to attack opponents' structures. And usually with the ball, they are going to go into a formation in the build-up, in their build-up, in their initial third, that usually has three players in the initial third. Um, and then they are going to put uh, they're going to put some of their fullbacks very high, and often they are going to put their wingers inside to pin up the back uh, defensive side of their opponents. So usually, depending on the structure of the opponent, they operate in a one-three-two-five. For example, versus Canada, when they had a line. A back line of five, they will basically operate with five in here, but again, Canada had five in the back. When they are operating, as is going to be probably the case against a back four like this from USA, I wonder if they are just going to bring four players up front or even three at some just to pin up all uh, the back four of USA. So the important element in here is that um, they are after the after the injury of Chucky Lozano, which was more of a natural winger. They are, they have been playing with Orbelin Pineda, and he's more of an interior player, more of a number ten. So he centralizes his position often and has also a little bit of uh, flexibility to check to the ball. And so they ended up playing 
very often with Gallardo very, very high. And, and that's why they are also looking to play through Hector Moreno. So they have two options in here in the first line of three, which is just having uh, Chaka Rodriguez here with El Titan Salcedo and with Hector Moreno. And then uh, they have Edson Alvarez, Hector Herrera, and, um, and Jonah, Jonah Dos Santos. So this is a structure of three, two, and five, three, two, one, and four, and so forth. And uh, the important thing about the way Mexico play is that they are very, very dynamic. The switch of positions when you are looking the game right from, from the first time, uh, you see like a lot of movement. Our eye can only track certain, um, um, certain pictures of the game and we look to see, we, we think like we are seeing a lot of movement, the ball goes fast and so forth. This is going to be a complicated uh, game for Mexico to get all the one because USA is an excellent opponent and they know each other very well. But they are still going to be looking for those combinations, those third men, just balling here and then back and then we keep playing, right? Uh, they also, when, when there is a lot of pressure in their, in their, um, in their first um, build out, what they are going to look it's uh, for someone like Funes Mori to get into these areas. On the, on the air to get into these areas, if there is a passing lane, of course, check to the ball and trying to play out of him. He's a very good player on the ball on the air and he has good ability to check to the ball and play on the first touch. That is one thing that you are going to see from Mexico. They look to play quick and they look to get the ball out of the feet quickly as well, except when the ball goes to someone like Tecatito Corona, uh, that they try to isolate sometimes. And he's a player that, of course, they look for him to create overloads, sorry, to create, um, yeah, overloads by the, def by the defense and then to move the ball. And usually, again, it's a team that looks to play very vertical, that looks to have a lot of options with the ball in the feet. And because of that, it's very dynamic and it's always stretching the opponent. So again, uh, the back three here, sometimes what happens with this back three uh, in the buildup is that it is actually Edson Alvarez, the one that comes in here and, or it's the one that comes in here. Even sometimes it's Hector Herrera, H -H, and Edson Alvarez comes in here. They are looking always to have this structure with three in the back, basically to give a lot of options, a lot of opportunities to do their build up. Now, and uh, also another player in another um, position that it's very important in Mexico is the position that usually in the last games had been played by Jonathan Dos Santos, which by the way he's playing under very dramatic circumstances because his dad died on Thursday and he has shown a lot of character and he has decided to play the game. And we expect him to be also a starter. Why? Because his position is it's very uh, tactically uh, heavy he is always an option and he can be switching with Hector at times. He can um, check, uh, he can drop a little bit more, but he is the player in between the lines, usually. He is the player in between the lines, giving options when there are no options, identifying himself as the free man. He's also the player that is very often trying to pin uh, the defenders. So almost operating when Funes goes over there, he's gonna come in here uh, trying to cause this doubt and trying to uh, occupy one of the back uh, one of the back lines because Funes goes to these areas a lot just to be option and to create overloads. He's going to do the same over here as well on the right side with Chakra, uh, Rodriguez and with Tecatito, right? So it's almost at times operating like a false nine. So much in this game, 
we will have to see if that is a possibility for Mexico, but that's what they want to do. Creating this structure, um, having always a player in here, so it's forcing some of the midfielders to condense in the middle, and then guess what? The idea of Mexico, again, offensively, the idea of Mexico is creating a lot of threats, a lot of possibilities. In the center channel, a lot of density in the center channel. Density in the center channel, right? This is the center channel, these are the inside channels to advance through the white areas. You are um, attracting the opponent team into these areas, and then they have a lot of ability, a lot of automatism and mechanism to play from one side to the other side, and then keep advancing together and keep playing in the opponent's half. With someone like Funes Mori kind of replicating with uh, what Raul Jimenez has been doing for them in the last couple of years, they don't have any issue on putting the ball, sorry, on the box, right? Uh, because he's a great um, player on the air for them. Now, defensively, what happens with this is that Mexico gets stretched at times. The way they play, they trying to occupy, trying to give a lot of passing options to their teammates, they get a stretch. So uh, they are going to try to get the ball back as soon as possible, but that's not always happening. And so in the, trans in the defensive transition, Mexico suffers quite a bit and will continue to suffer against uh, US uh, speed and ability to play an ability to uh, to bring the ball forward with the dribble. That's one. That's going to be one of the key elements in this game. Uh, when it comes to personal, just to to finalize um, our comment regarding Mexico, again we are expecting Mexico to play with um, Salcedo, Moreno, El, uh, let's say Edson Alvarez. That usually you will, you will be seeing here when the lineup is it's so to everyone. Edson Alvarez, HH, Hector Herrera, key player for them, and then uh, Pineda, Jonathan Dos Santos, Gallardo, Chakra, Chakra Rodriguez, Tecatito Corona, y Funes Mori. Pineda, player very important for them, has been playing very well, uh, has been having some issues, so probably. We'll see for how long he can be um, impacting the game. Gallardo has been a key player for them, playing better and better the, uh, along the, the competition. So again, it's a team that it's very vertical, that looks to give always a lot of passing options to their teammates. That's why it is very dynamic. It's a team that don't care a lot who is in the positions as long as there are players in the right spots. And uh, because of that as well, it suffers a little bit on defensive transition. It also suffers a little bit uh, with the running in behind. Hector Moreno is not anymore. Probably he was never a quick player. Um, and, uh, and both him and Titan Salcedo are all right on the air, but against the athleticism of USA men's national team, they are going to have some challenges to overcome. Mexico will face the US men's national team. So what kind of team we are going to see from the USA? Uh, what kind of elements can the coach Greg Berhalter and his coaching staff put together in this game? What are going to be some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses that Mexico could exploit this is what we're going to talk about and discuss about in this brief section. So when it comes to the U.S. men's national team, during this Gold Cup 2021, we have seen two different phases. We have seen a team during the group stage that was changing more, that was still under 
the idea and the discourse that is going to that was going to be dominating the games and trying to break down the opponents. But then when it came to this to the last game versus Canada, in that situation of imposing their game plan did not happen, we saw a change. And so we can see that we have seen a group stage US men national team and then an elimination game US men's national team. And since we are in the final and this is it, I think what we can see probably likely will be closer to the previous elimination games that we have just seen and played by USA. But it's open to the coaching staff, their decision maker making what they see in training, which is something we don't have any access to. That's what you see, what players are fit, what players are mentally prepared to a game like this. Now, USA during the elimination game has played and has looked for win games. So when it comes to, to this, we have seen some elements that might be complicated, some elements that might be strengths for this game. Uh, this is in blue, the USA men's national team. They have lined up in a 1-4-3-3 formation or picture in the beginning of the game. They have changed the element, of course, offensively and defensively when they were um, facing Jamaica and Qatar. Um, when it comes to the team, let's say in the offensive phase, to have the ball on the feet and to play, we have seen a couple of things that we, we can utilize for this game. We saw a, US, a USA men's national team more comfortable with the, with the ball on the feet when they were playing against a 1-5-3-2 or a 1-5-2-3 as Qatar. Uh, against this formation, USA was just centralizing all the time one of their fullbacks to do a 3v2 in the initial third. And just by playing around or quoting Greg Berhalter to tie up their um, opponent's offensive line and so forth, USA looked more comfortable. But it looked less comfortable when they were facing a more um, relatable uh, system as it was Jamaica, relatable to Mexico. There are a couple of other elements that are important in this equation, which are actually, and that relate actually to the, to the ground. Um, the ground in which the Jamaica game was played, it was a turf uh, and it was a little bit more complicated to make the crease quick passes, instead the, um, the field in, Aus in Austin was a little bit better for that kind of game. Uh, so actually uh, the field in which this game is played is going to be very important there in Vegas. And when it comes to our board, what we can see is that USA has a struggle against a team that is well positioned and high pressing in a good executed way. Uh, Jamaica ba uh, has based their game model on that, so it's not like Mexico is going to do it as perfect as Jamaica, but they are going to put USA men's national, men's national team in trouble when it comes to the build-up. If we keep a team that has Matt Turner, uh, Miles Robinson and James Sands, USA, uh, the best thing that happened against uh, Qatar it was that he was not only operating on one flank, mostly the right flank, but also on the left flank. And he gained some confidence when it comes to Miles Robinson, when it comes to Sam Bynes to play uh, in these areas. Again, again, in a very emotional um, and passionate and high pressure and so forth game, how is this going to work out for Miles Robinson, a player that is not so comfy on the ball because it's not his main attribute, or Sam Bynes, as it is and as it was in the past. We don't we don't know, and I think USA has some question to solve uh, when it comes to the strategy before the game, and then hopefully they will be able to execute it. Also, because the number six 
uh, that has been playing is Kalina Costa. And Kalina Costa is not uh, the player that is going to get out of these very condensed situations in just one touch with the right body profile all the time. That's not the main attribute of, of Kalina Costa. So I think one way to get out of this very easily would be just basically to, to play with the double six, to have more options in there with the double six. With Bushio, if you are playing Bushio again, um, uh, and, and so just creating way more uh, confusion just by putting two in here, giving two options and doing just the basic in, out, just basic in, out, right? This is very easy to, da, to do on the board. So having two center mids or do like Mexico does, just having one of them on the, um, uh, on, in between the back line and then, and then putting here actually Bucio in those tight spaces where he can still uh, get out of them just with one pass, okay? So I think this is something that U.S. men's national team could consider. The double six uh, to give more options to this. Again, when it comes to these situations in a final, in an elimination game, how much have you trained? How, ma how comfortable the coaching staff and the players are going to be with something like this? That's something that they will solve and they decide before the game. We mentioned um, the name of Busho there, and that's another element that is going to be important when it comes to the to the when it comes to the personnel as well. Um, now, we said before that one of the strengths that USA has built through these elimination games is the confidence of key players as Mike Robinson, and also the fact that in the last game USA was. Um, uh, was um, creating opportunities on the left flank and not only on the right flank. So it's a way more balanced team than it was during the group stage. Another very important element, and here we go with some of the, um, with another weakness or a question that USA is going to have to, uh, to solve, it's how it's going to be the matchup between Funes Mori and James Sands. So Funes Mori has a little bit more of a tendency of operating on the Mexican left flank. And especially when that ball goes to the air, James Sands has already shown difficulty to deal with these excellent players. It's not something diminishing James Sands, but when playing against Corey Burke from Jamaica or playing against Funes Mori on the air, it's just something difficult to a complex for, for any player. So that's going to be an issue for the U.S. men's national team as well that they are going to have to solve. So um, we mentioned some, some, of the, some of the strengths. There is a strength that comes with personal and that is the fact that USA has, um, has had more players has given themselves more opportunities and variation when it comes to the second half of the game. USA have already created a sort of pattern in the first 50, uh, 45, 60 minutes, and then another group that is able to impact the game in the second half and change it and being um, really uh, impactful players for them. So that is something that I think USA is way ahead than Mexico when it comes to, to this final game. Let's, let's come back again to the idea of the parts of the personnel. Do we think the USA is going to change the starting 11 from this uh, last couple of games? Uh, it's difficult to, to say it. I would say Dike and Arriola look that they might start again, but no one should be surprised if Sardes will be here. It's going to be depending on many factors that we cannot control and that we are not aware of at this point. It's more interesting to see, to me, how it's going to be looking this, this midfielder three. Busio gives you the idea, uh, gives you the opportunity of uh, matching up well with Ache Ache, I do think. 
uh, of um, getting out of tight spaces as well. Um, as a coaching staff, you want to see him in a big game and see how he responds and so forth. Um, but considering that Mexico has an issue on defensive transition and um, players that can hurt Mexico are players that are quick dribb dribbling the ball forward, I would say Eric Williamson will be an option for this game as well. Um, of course, por supuesto, Christian Roldan as well. But Christian Roldan has been utilized more as a sub of um, Paul Arriola. So you are changing too many dynamics that probably will not happen. But Eric Williamson gives you the opportunity of um, playing out of tight spaces and then moving the ball forward. Now, why should, be you, uh, why should you be changing things that have been working out well? when you can put Eric Williamson on the minute 60 or 65 or 70 because this might be a, absolutely a, a game that you strategize on a total of 120 minutes and so forth so Eric Williamson might be an, op a, an option for the second half of course Christian Rodan I think is going to be in the game at some point there or there uh, and, and Jassi Sardes is going to play we don't know yet when another option um, when it comes to personnel and opportunities and uh, combinations, a strategy that USA should consider. We said that the, transi the defensive transitions are complicated and a challenging element for Mexico. Well, uh, there are other things that are challenging for Mexico. The team that has challenged both USA and Mexico is the Canada men's national team. Canada has made a really good um, performance in this goal cap with injuries, with absences, and it's a team to look at. They have both challenged these two teams in the final. How did Canada challenge Mexico? If you look at this Mexico team, uh, we said many times, well, this is number seven, this is Yona. So theoretically, the three players of, UA of Mexico that play in the midfield this is a little bit theory, of course, but are also um, in different lines, are also in different um, heights of the field, all right? So um, what it means is that they occupy different elements vertically to give options, to advance the ball, to recycle, to switch. But again, density-wise, they are stretched out often. So what Canada did is just to put one more player to put one more player on the midfield. They created a box basically, which is something very fancy in these days in world soccer, world football. They created the box. That's why I was also mentioning the box before, because the box versus Mexico helped you uh, to get out, helped you to get out of um, of the high uh, pressure by Mexico, right? You can play this ball. Who is this poor guy going to do? Yeah, he has to. He has to go against those two guys. Yes, you can. If you can create that. If not, you recycle. This is gonna come, and then you keep playing. So you can play in and out. Um, and then you have the superiority the clear superiority on the midfield. Plus, the other thing that Canada did with this formation that, as you can see right now, is not anymore in 1-4-3-3, but a 1-4 box or 1-4-4-2. Four, four, it is to put two quick players, uh, Tejon Buchanan, two quick and good players, uh, in between the center backs and the fullbacks. We said before that Mexico launches the fullbacks. They go very high, especially the left fullback, Gallardo is basically a winger. So that's the space, that's the avenue that Tation Buchanan uh, was uh, utilizing. Or is the same on, on the right flank, uh, where Chaka Rodriguez goes all the way. Has US men's national team uh, have speed on the attack? A lot. This is the moment where someone like Joaquini 
uh, could definitely hurt the team. Uh, hope, hobby, of course, Sardes, of course. So I see a game where in the second half, USA can utilize something like that. You can also play Sardis uh, in a situation like that. You can play Sardis Hopi, you can play Joaquini Hopi, Joaquini Sardis, and uh, sub out DK if he is not physically ready anymore or if the game is different. Also, this is a position where Christian Roldan uh, can absolutely impact the game and he will be very comfy, Roldan, legit, and so forth and so forth. We haven't mentioned uh, Kalina Costa, but Kalina Costa has another game where his main strength is going to be very important for the US men's national team, which is just helping, balancing the team on the defensive side when it comes to transitions or even on the offensive side when it comes also to attacking transitions. Uh, I think Kalina Costa is a player that at some point, in some way, in a different level, but has a kind of Casemiro for Real Madrid type of game and value and he's bringing that uh, to the team and that's why he's playing in this elimination game starting 11 for the USA men's national team. Again, these are some of the options of this team just solving the conundrum of the build-up by USA. How are they going to do it? Of course, you have DK here. If you play DK there, and DK is way better than Titan Salcedo, Hector Moreno on those balls, so he's going to give you options if you want to utilize. Same for Hobby as well. Uh, but how USA solve this situation in the build-up is going to be very important. And then um, the personnel on the midfield. And remembering that the game it's 120 minutes or at least 90 minutes guarantee. And so um, there are different variations and combinations that I think the U.S. men's national team is better equipped than Mexico to put together and adjust uh, on the fly during. It's all set up for this exciting and vibrant final of the 2021 Gold Cup between USA and Mexico. Uh, we do appreciate a lot you uh, listening and going with us on this analysis of what might happen, some of the options that USA and Mexico have for this final. As always, please let us know about your ideas, your comments and your questions that you might have and enjoy this final game. It's going to be a big one.